Welcome. You are listening to Readers and Writers with Rock Hill Publishing and your hosts, James Hill and Athena Paris. Hello. Hello there. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so this is our second podcast. First one went down in flames, but that's okay. <laughs> no, I'm joking. Uh, we love doing these. And this time we're going to talk about publishers and editors because I'm the publisher of Rock Hill Publishing and Athena is the editor editor-in-chief, and we want to try to demystify some of the ideas that people have and misconceptions that people have exactly what is a publisher, what does he do, and what is an editor, and what does, in this case, she does, and we would like to break it down into, like, the main characters, okay? So we're looking at the main character as the publisher and as the editor, and when you think about publishing a book, think of it as a business. A lot of people think of it writing as an art form. And it is, it is an art. And the writers are artists. The publishers are not just some guy in a hat and a suit and a tie, as you see, <laughs> that, that only thinks about the business end of it. But we do look at it as a business. And you have to, because there's money involved. I mean, it costs to put out books and it costs for writers to put out more. So there is that that idea. And the idea is basically the publisher had the desire to see uh, good books in print. Nobody wants to put out a book that won't sell. No writer wants to write a book. Well, very few writers really write books that they don't want to sell. Most people have an idea, even if they're writing their memoirs or something, they think they're going to sell it to somebody, their families, uh, their friends. And, and for most writers though, they're always looking to be a bestseller. They wanna be up there. They want to get their, their, their words in print. They wanna get their ideas sold. And so that becomes the business idea. And as a publisher, I wanna see good books in print. And by good books, I don't mean uh, that the story or that the book is, that the story is a great story that, you know, never been told before, because mostly every story has been told before. And, and we always say, you know, write the story you know. Well, most people live the same life. I mean, there, there's changes in the technology, there's changes in, in location, there's changes in people's experience, but they're not that different. If you read the Bible, you find out that mostly every other story ever written is also told in the Bible. There's love, there's lust, there's hate, there's war, there's anything you can think of. And the Bible is just the only book. You can look into any book and find somewhat of the same story. So when we talk about writing a good book, we're talking about a book that looks good, that's put together well, cover is good, the, the format is good, that kind of thing. Uh, Athena, as the editor, what is the idea that you have of a good book? My idea of a good book is uh, um, the inside of the book, obviously. I'm the guts of the, of the body, whereas the publisher wants to produce an entire body that looks good and um, is effective. My uh, eye is on all the inside, the organ, so to speak. So I look that everything works, that the story flows, that the language is good. I'm looking for the, that writer who just knows how to use words to put sentences together um, carefully and touches us, you know, touches our mind. We, that's how quotes are created. You know, the, those things that will appeal to us and will remind us of... Uh, all kinds of things that we uh, live through the words that they've created. So that is my uh, attention is always on the inside. Does the plot make sense? Does it flow? Are there plot holes? Is the sentence construction uh, decent? Um, is the writer uh, using and reusing certain words? You know, don't be uh, too verbose when you don't have to be. Be economical. Don't write 
completely out of the station, you know, keep yourself within a limit uh, because books are expensive to uh, publish and you can't oh, just have, know. <laughs> and you uh, can't just have a, a novel that's 160,000 words um, and expect people to pay that high price for such a book. So you need to uh, teach your writers or uh, at least encourage them to be as economical with their words as they can be and make the words count in those yeah. sentences so that you can make a 160,000 word novel, maybe 95,000. And that is more affordable. Um, and I, I, say, I say, think of the trees. <laughs> you know, yeah. you, you, we have to cut down a lot of trees to make books. And yeah. you don't want to have to cut those trees down and have a book that's a, like you say, 160,000 words becomes a rather thick book. And if you could get the 160,000 words down into 90,000 or so, 100,000, you're going to save a lot of trees. And, and that's important too, the ecology. And yeah. like you say, the, the way people talk, the turn of the phrase, I, I'm, I always love that. As a writer, you try to turn a phrase, which means you try to write something that says something in such a way that it captures the imagination, it captures the attention, but it's said cleverly. Few words that spark that idea, that spark that picture in the person's mind. And as a publisher and as editors, that's what we're looking for. We're looking for quality manuscripts that have that turn of phrase that 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 that's not just rambling on that we have to dig all through and you know find the story. We want something that's written well and talks well and tells a good story. Uh, we also have supporting characters in the in the publishing business, and that is we need book cover designers. We need formatters. We need people that help us do our job of putting together a good book. And sometimes we have to wear multiple hats. You have to be the, the book cover designer. You have, especially independent publishers. Because a lot of times you can't afford to hire, you know, top notch book designers. You can't afford to hire somebody to format it. And you may not have to. I mean, I'm a programmer. Uh, so I know that's top publishing. I don't really have to hire somebody to format the inside of a book. Uh, yeah. My artwork is not uh, probably that great, so I'm not going to draw the covers, but I can find people who can do the covers. And not only do we work with new artists, but we also work with new, well, new writers, but we also work with new artists. So I look for somebody who has up and coming abilities and we put them to work for the art covers and for the book covers and things like that. Yeah, that's right. Because as they say, uh, a cover catches the eye to lead them to then open the cover, you know, the pages and see what's inside. And it's important to uh, uh, produce a cover that's enticing and uh, it's an invitation to open the book. So that's basically what the cover is. It's like the picture on a menu. They give you a picture so that you know what your meal is going to look like. And your eye sometimes doesn't even go through the ingredients first. It looks at the picture, oh, this looks nice. Therefore, now I'm going to look to see how do they put it together. And that's what a cover that does as well. It uh, invites your eye to come closer, open it and read on. That's what the cover basically does. Yeah, as the phrase goes, you know, don't judge a book by its cover. Well, mm -hmm. everybody judges a book by, a by cover. its cover. You judge the second book by what's inside the first book's cover. Yes. But that first book is always judged by its cover. And then we look into it and we read it. Then we decide, well, this is very well written. And it looks pretty. It's easy on the eyes. Uh, that's mm -hmm. what part of the format it is. Is a book easy on the eyes? Is, is it telling the story in a way that you expect to see the story? So for different types of books, you're expecting different types of formatting. Yeah, you want flowery, uh, big print, um, 
type of formatting for fantasies and drop caps, which are, you know, the big letter at the very beginning yeah. of, a, of a paragraph. That works well in a fantasy or maybe even in the science fiction. It doesn't really work that well in a crime novel. You want it to be more fast paced. So the words have to be a little differently formatted because you want the reader just to keep reading right through. You don't want them to stop and look at all the flowery uh, decorations yeah. out, outside of the story. You want to draw them into the story and keep them there. So, yeah. yeah. Which comes to how they explain about the word said. If you are in the thick of things, like in a very uh, busy scene, um, you use the word said instead of uh, explaining all kinds of things. Oh, he sighed or anything else. So that is how um, uh, the editing works is, are you detracting me from the action scene by saying too many words that don't need to be here? If that is so, then rather use the word said instead of yelled and screamed and uh, because many writers think that they have to explain use good adjectives use all kind of good words to uh, show us the the battle scene when um, all you want to do you've already created your picture because every reader creates the picture so while you uh, following this picture you don't want to be uh, derailed from your um, image that you've created so therefore the word said does not intrude on any uh, way you're thinking so therefore i will accept the word said much more than any other fancy word that you would have given me. And it shows me how smart and clever you are. Whereas I want to see the scene. I right. don't want to read your fancy words. I want to see the scene. So that's how an editor thinks, you know. Sometimes you, and sometimes the scene itself would lend to the word yell, scream. So you don't have to tell them that the person screamed. If yes. you say if someone got shot and they say, oh my God, I've been shot. You kind of realize the guy is not saying, oh, my God, I've been shot. <laughs> he, he's going to be blurting that out, yelling that out, you know. Oh, I've been hit. No one said, oh, I've been hit. So if you told me that somebody just got shot in the, in the scene, I kind of understand that he's already, you may not even have to say said, you just can yes. say, yes, you know, the word. Yeah. I've been yeah. shot. You know, the shock of it will, will automatically come through. So I think that's what you say. That's what you're looking for as the editor. Yes. Um, the last thing I would like to say is as publishers and editors, we have to know our genres. And that's why we only publish in Rock Hill Publishing like four genres. There's a lot of subgenres in there, but we basically stick to romance, sci fi, fantasy, and like adult, adult fiction. And because there's a lot of different fiction, when you say fiction, that covers a wide territory. Yeah. And so we stick to fiction that deal with adult subjects, uh, love and hate, uh, marriage, um, you know, divorces, uh, infidelity, dif different different things that uh, crime, different things that fall into it of that adults will want to read, and that's why uh, because you have to be knowledgeable in what you publish you can't I, we don't publish public poetry not because we don't like poetry but we don't write poetry we don't read that much poetry at least i know i used to write poetry but, you know who knows if that was any <laughs> but as you go on you get more and more into your niches and that's why you know those you know those things and that helps to to, to produce a, yes. a company Yes, and as an editor, you have to help your writer figure out how that genre, since we deal with new writers, we need to help them figure out that in their genre, this is how it's written, which is why I read a lot uh, between fantasy and sci-fi, because it's not my particular genre, so I need to read so that I understand when our writers send work to me, I understand that fantasy is a more... Uh, 
light type of writing in comparison to uh, science fiction, because in science fiction, there's a lot of descriptive scientific terms that take, uh, uh, that need to be written down in the explanation of the story, whereas fantasy tends to be a little bit lighter uh, written and there is more white space on the page as well, because everything is uh, more uh, mentally created, actually, whereas in sci-fi, you need to give us the explanations of what you're talking about, because I need to see it. I need to see that lab. Absolutely. Yeah. Sci-fi is more densely written. Yes, and so it's a very like, dense yeah. uh, kind of writing compared to fantasy, uh, yeah. exactly for that. Except for fantasy that uses a lot of spells, then you will notice that the writing becomes a little bit dense as well because you need to explain your spells. Yeah, we'll get into that at another day when we start talking about subgenres because yes. we talk about fantasy and spells and magic and you know that kind of thing. Oh, that's a really, really wide, wide uh, and, uh, thing. Amy, so yes, man, how I are we? <laughs> I hate for the conversation to end. I'm learning so much on this show. Just listening to you guys talk, I've learned so much. But, you know, the conversation has to end at some point, but you can always join readers and writers next week when we'll be talking about indie publishing versus traditional publishing. So join Rock Hill, James and Athena next week to talk all kinds of different, all kinds of different publishing. <laughs> <laughs> thank you, Amy. Oh, yeah, thank you. Yes.